Since 2019, I have been fascinated with the self-proclaimed anti-fascists of Ireland. My first interaction with such people was on the social media platform Twitter, and eventually I was witness to hundreds of them standing against freedom of speech while screaming, which I must admit was a spectacle that I found surreal as well as deeply confusing. I remember being utterly perplexed trying to rationalise why hundreds of people would scream Nazi scum at a large gathering of people they never even met. Since that event, I have had many other interactions with the so-called anti-fascists both online and in the streets, and I can confidently say that they are as stupid as they are malicious and indeed delusional. In an effort to highlight their collective stupidity, I wish to explain the meaning of fascism and how these sadistic simpletons actually use aspects of this system of control to their advantage. Fascism is a philosophy which demands individual citizens willingly submit themselves to the state. Much like Marxism, which had an influence on this philosophy, it thrives on collectivism. It was designed as a socialist movement motivating people on the basis of class and national identity. But what seals the deal to create a fascist state is when all private actions are forced to serve society. The private interest and the public interest become one and the same. The Nazis, or the National Socialists, are the group everyone looks to as the example, although I would suggest that the vast majority of people in this country should study the subject a little harder, considering their blind participation in realising such a system today. Here in Ireland, our own government has created a scenario by which all must willingly submit to the state or else face segregation and discrimination. The form of control we are experiencing is collectivist in nature. The government has brought the vast majority of people together as a submissive, ultra-compliant collective under the banner of a health crisis. The issue of national identity can be viewed in the following way. It quite simply means us and them. And today, those groups are the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Lastly, to complete the circle, the government has inserted itself into every private business in the country, much to their detriment, and has given them a mission that has been created to serve the state and control the masses. In Ireland, private businesses are unquestionably enforcing state compliance, and they do so by denying access to goods and services to a large portion of the population who are not willing to submit. At this stage, I would like to say that all it took for the government to conceal the fascist policies implemented was to simply call them health measures, and in my opinion, this has shown the majority of Irish people to be ignorant conformists who have been the silent wearers of the swastika for almost two years, and of course, if you are inclined to disagree, I welcome your argument. But moving on to the self-proclaimed anti-fascists of Twitter and public protest, after two years of consistent interaction with such people, I would suggest that they are merely the foot soldiers of stupidity with a woke Marxist agenda. While the end game of such an agenda is to create a future free of hate, poverty and pollution for the collective, I assure you that the pursuit of such goals involves a level of control that is akin to slavery. These ideas are packaged in ways that are designed to garner support from everyday people, but I can say with great confidence that through the right questions, I can expose these Marxist beliefs and show how the realisation of such ideas would only serve to harm and oppress. But why do I fundamentally believe that the Antifa types do more to encourage fascism than to destroy it? Well, Every protest I attended in 2020, which stood in defiance of the fascist government measures, had a group of anti-fascist counter-protesters screaming Nazi scum off our streets at us. Anti-lockdown protests, anti-discrimination protests, protests for the freedom to choose, were met with angry Antifa members, with all their annoying chants, and in some cases, violence. Online activity was much the same, however, 
it should be expected that those who are in any way invested in the Marxist ideology will both lie and derange language in order to control or discredit. It must also be said that on two occasions the Marxists stood in protest against freedom of speech in their hundreds, with several TDs of the leftist parties and members representing dozens of NGOs in support also, which won't come as a shock to many listening. I submit that attacking people protesting against an authoritarian government isn't going to do much to alleviate the damage caused by fascism, but I did say earlier that these people are stupid. At this stage, I would like to present to you what I believe is a fine example of how the Marxists present themselves as fair and tolerant. This is Michal Olan's Twitter page, a man I have chosen strictly because of his proclaimed beliefs. His bio reads as follows. For social justice, social democracy, fairness, inclusivity, rationality, empiricism, diversity and kindness. He is against hate speech, racism and hates Twitter bullies. Considering the content of his bio, which is presented as supremely benevolent in order to mask his real inclinations, he then presents to the world the following tweet. Now I won't insult your intelligence by explaining in great depth how such ideas run counter to the content of his bio, but this is a perfect example of how those on the left will both lie and derange language in order to appear virtuous, while at the same time pushing ideas that are harmful. Imagine a mother comforting her child with one hand, whilst gripping a pillow with her other hand, with the intention of committing an act of great harm. Well, I believe the more you learn about these fraudulent and despicable people, the more that analogy seems to fit. In closing I will say this, the ideas of the Marxist left carry no moral or practical value. History has shown that collectivism, as seen in Nazi Germany and communist Russia, leads to death and oppression. And don't let anyone for a second tell you that Nazism was a movement of the right. In my opinion, a good right-wing thinker will support a limited government over a large and controlling government. He will value individual freedom over the collective. His identity will not only be represented through the colours of a flag, but through his ideas and values which are born out of freedom and liberty. And while a right-wing thinker may feel a patriotic duty to serve his country, he would never seek to force those to participate against their will, as it would run counter to individual freedom. Finally, I just want to say that the woke Marxist anti-fascists of the left are delusional, lying, totalitarian idiots. And I look forward to many years of living in your empty skulls, rent free.